Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin, and today we're playing more Disco Elysium. But of course, what else would we be playing right now? <laughs> so in the last episode, I wasn't sure how to progress the story because, like I said before, I had failed so many checks and I just need to get more XP so I could level up. It may have something to do with the fact that I wasted like four or five skill points on composure just to dance, but yes, it was worth it. But that leaves me in a bit of a bit of a struggle right now, but I'm, let's not get into that just yet. So in the last episode, we explored through the traffic jam a little bit, trying to find the third lorry driver um, to figure out what's the whole deal with this drug trafficking. Titus implied that it was probably Ruby who was leading the whole thing, but we kind of needed more information from the other drivers. We ended up talking to this old lady. It was the old lady from like episode two, um, one or two, I don't remember. We haven't talked to her in a long time because every time I tried to like snap my fingers to get her attention, Kim would stop us. But now he's like, yeah, go for it. So, so we did and we talked to her. She seemed like she was kind of in this daze where she was remembering her past and just very nostalgic and didn't really say anything that useful. That crossed her off the list of kind of suspects for this whole drug trafficking thing. She might still be involved, but I seriously doubt it. In, even if she is, I don't think she cares. We ended up talking to the racist lorry driver and he pointed us to Ceiling. He's the one selling his wares outside of Roy's pawn shop and he's kind of a goofy dude. I actually like Ceiling. He's pretty funny. He wanted to stay out of the whole business though and he told us that actually it was a woman who was doing the whole drug trafficking which backed up Titus's story. So now we're pretty positive it's Ruby but again we can't find Ruby and Tommy knows about her but he doesn't want to give her up because she's a friend of his and I don't want to make him tell us because that's like I feel like it'll give me bad cop points and I don't want to do that. It might be our only option though because I ended up failing a check um, when I talked to the racist guy who Kim kind of softened up by intimidating him a little bit and then passed it to me and then of course I failed the check like I always do. Um, so I don't know if maybe I just have to get Tommy to tell us. If, it, if there's no other way I'm gonna try my best to figure out you know, a different way to do it, but this might be our only option. The other thing, the last thing I want to address before we get started, I know this is kind of a short intro in comparison, but we went up to Klaze's roof and we looked at her window a little bit closer this time. It was actually really cool because it kind of gave us a step back and we assessed that the shot could have come from somewhere that wasn't on the roof. So now we kind of have to go through and cross out all the different places that the shot could have been taken from. We already crossed out one thing on the list, which was kind of near the the uh, the land's edge. And um, so we crossed that out. The next one up is the boardwalk and the other one is the islet. So I'm hoping we can check both of those out in this episode. I don't know if we'll get to that, but it is important to think about that the shot might not have been taken from the actual roof. There's a lot to do, there's a lot we can do, it's just that I can't because I keep failing these checks and then I can't retry them, but I'm trying my best, I swear. Then, last thing, we ended up finding out that Ruby is most likely staying underneath in like the basement area of the Feld Electric building. We got in from underground. I don't think we should progress with that yet because it's kind of given me like, uh, be careful, there's no turning back after this moment vibes. So I'm a little scared. I don't know. We'll see where this episode takes me. It might be a lot of fast forwarding through stuff that um, I'm just trying to do to get more XP, stuff that might not really matter to the overall story. So might see me skipping back and forth through a lot of stuff. If it comes down to it, I'll have to get Tommy to tell us where Ruby is. And I don't want to make him do that, but I might have to. Anyways, let's not waste more time and let's get back into this game and see what happens next. Okay, it might seem weird that we're back in the church, but I want to just do a bunch of different- Oh my god! <laughs> Did you see that? Oh shit! Kim's notebook was floating across. Okay, whatever. Whoa, specialist grade headset. I didn't even see that. Hold up. What the heck is that? Inland Empire in your head. See it again? A giant pair of cans to keep you safe from the world. This particular set seems to have changed hands several times. May become sweaty after extended use. Ah, uh, that all too familiar song. Wow, we're standing pretty close, aren't we? Hi, Suna. 
Yes, what is it? I mean... <laughs> I'm gonna try just because. Just because, you know? I need 70 more points to upgrade. Uh, this is a bad idea. It's fine. Logic, 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 logic. Do, 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 yes, what is it? Wow, it's still really low. All you hear is silence in your head. Okay, great. But that two millimeter hole again. The swallow, you mean? Okay, yeah. Great, thanks. All right, bye. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Yo, man. What's on your mind? He drops a bolt into his toolbox. Why are you so suspicious about everything? Suspicious people are esoteric people. We don't go around spilling everything to Johnny Law. They don't call me Noid for nothing. It took us setting out for this whole enterprise to get our signs synced. Why are you called Noid anyway? It's short for paranoid. Oh. What are you suspicious of? Uh, it'd be easier to list stuff I'm not suspicious of. I'm not suspicious of sand and color. Mechanics and chemistry also have a trueness about them. Most anything else deceives. Wants to steal your life away. This is a good, dangerous line of questioning. You should prod him on. I actually really like Noid. His look is, like, so cool. What are the most suspicious things? I don't have a top 10 list of things I'm most suspicious of, but if I had one, the left-right complex would be number one. Number two would be their sole accomplishment, the pig wheat paradigm. <laughs> Does this mean you're mentally ill? Tell me more about the left-right business. What's suspicious about the production of pork and wheat? It's our only shit. We should make better use of not being animals or cereal grain ourselves. What's bad about cereal grain? Having enough food f could be a precursor for great things. What's bad about animals? Animals are cute. Yeah, it's our only shit and we fucking suck at it. What's, about, what's bad about animals? Nothing. Animals are cool, guys. I like animals too. But that doesn't mean I have to be one myself. Does this mean you're mentally ill? Mental illness is a term the powers use to homogenize people. I think I don't reach mental illness. I am merely politically ill. A suspicious element. Tell me more about the left-right business. I prefer not to. Both ask the wrong question. Any spark of light from either one is accidental. Oops. <laughs> Their combined movement's only concern is producing enough pig and wheat for everyone. The end goal of humanity. The original mistake was assuming that words have more being than bodies. That's what led us astray, far from our true lives, but we may yet find a way back. Whatever this true life is, you feel it's the real centerpiece of this mythology. <laughs> okay, Noid, though that was certainly stimulating, I want to ask you about something else. His eyes flicker. Uh, all right, bye. Don't think there's anything I can do with him. Egg! Good morning! Yeah! Harder car! The words echo magnificently through the way. Whoa, that was a crazy sound we heard before. Yeah! <clears throat> it was awesome! And scary! Very hard car! Oh, the, uh, the thing that Suna was doing? His voice booms through the chamber, then gets silent. Too hard car, in fact! I couldn't control it at all. He brushes his hand through his hair. What happened? It sucks up all the air in the mix until it's the only thing left. It starts compressing itself and everything around it. Completely fills up the headspace. Extreme. Inside your chest, the heart beats still with the after effects of the sound. Imagine if you could harness that power, making it pulse. Look, there's two Andres in the bottom. <laughs> Sorry. Is there anything we can do about it? Oh! I don't know. Maybe <laughs> someone can do something with this. I imagine this is the sound that the future could make. Sounds like a horrible future. Can't escape the sound! Can't escape the future! Okay, bye, Akehead. Oh boy. Alright. 
Oh. You see that seagull up there? Remind <laughs> you of anybody? No one comes to mind. Um, me? Kim? Not gonna have a seagull conversation. Kim? <laughs> what? Kim? No, it's you. You. You and the seagull are just alike. Why am I like a seagull? Think about the seagull's story. It's one of endurance and adaptation. The seaside was paradise once. They were birds of that paradise. Okay. Then their paradise became shit city. And what did they do? They became urban survivors, eating burgers out of trash cans, killing and eating pigeons. No time for that sentimental bullshit. They're hustlers getting shit done. They're one pair of track pants away from gangsters, just like you. Hold on, have I ever eaten a burger out of the trash? Fucking right, whatever it takes to survive. I am the seagull. I guess I am a bit like a seagull. But I'm not like that, I'm still romantic. Sure, inside. But outside, it's a tough world. You've got to do whatever it takes to survive. And you do. Question is, will you admit that to yourself? Okay, well, let me reconsider. Good boy. Guess I am a bit like a seagull. Exactly. The seagull does what it takes, and so do oh. you. You've got that same spirit in you. When the time comes, you push yourself. Thanks, endurance. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Is there anything I'm missing over here? I'm just gonna say everything reminds me of Kim. <laughs> Trying to find where a shot could be taken from. Maybe. Seems like somebody wants to sell me something. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why can't I fast travel anymore? Whatever. You pick up the handset. There's a tone. The machine is operable. Sure. Calling. Still calling. Again? Seriously? I don't know, dude. Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hi, Gerard. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, your electricity. <laughs> no, it's just a <laughs> prank call. Is elect electricity there? I need to speak with electricity, please. Gerard, what a douche name. Change it. Change your name. <laughs> Is electricity there? No, but I got a feeling Al Kick Your Ass is going to make an appearance if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. Phone hanging up. Oh my god. Disconnect tone. Best 10 cents I've ever spent. <laughs> Electricity. Oh my god. That is really funny. I wonder if there's anything I missed in Roy's pawn shop. Hey Roy, it's been a while. I think I could buy some uh, precious spinners back. A typical Martinez streetlight sits among assorted floor and table lamps. Is that a street light? Yes, officer. As you see, it's in perfect working order. His manner is casual, but his speech is careful, measured. He wants you to know that he has nothing to hide. Where'd you get this? It was brought to me to be altered. We are not here to investigate the theft of city property. He leans in so the pawnbroker doesn't hear him. You have to admit it's rather clever what he's done with it. He pauses, studying the light. Much for the streetlight. 700 real. A bargain, I dare say. Is that all? A bargain? No, it's not. <laughs> He's trying to sweet talk you into buying trash. Well, it's not like I'd want to buy it anyway. Are you out of your mind? There's one just like that one on every corner. Even taking in account... Even taking into account the risk of obtaining the light, that seems a bit steep. 700 sounds about right. I imagine it wasn't easy selling off that street lamp. Seems a bit steep. There's also the matter of rewiring, but the most important transformation is the light's placement among ordinary indoor fixtures, which has adjusted its morphological field 
The light became suitable for use <laughs> inside the home just a few days ago. I don't know what I'd use it for anyway. But that's funny. Excuse me? Wow. A very large red t-shirt with an impressive print stands out from the other garb. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. The print depicts a muscled man striding <laughs> toward you. A giant sword in each hand, encircled by burning embers. Behind him is a cluster of cabins engulfed in flames. Beneath him are the words, Hyeondal burning. Sniff the t-shirt. Smells like worn cotton and a little old sweat there. Worn cotton with a side of flea market or trash bin. <laughs> Sniffing is okay, but please don't try anything on. Can't have you leaving your photon emissions in the fabric of things you're not going to buy. All right, dude. You're not imagining it. Photon emissions? What is he talking about? How much for the t-shirt? Two real. Really? That's dirt cheap. <laughs> Lieutenant raises his eyebrows. Can you just give it to me for free then? But why? Because I'm a broke cop without a cent to my name. Perhaps I could repay you in some other way. I guess I can't really think of any good reason. Could repay you in some other way? Our dealing goods, not services. Go of the shirt. Uh, I only have two dollars and ten cents. I can't. I can't justify it. All the old boombo. All right. Anything you over see here? rows of try to find something pretty and cool here. Hmm. Then use it to win her back. Win her back? Yes. Buy something nice. A figurine. I already did that though. This sounds off. <laughs> you shouldn't trust this guy. Um. Inspect the knights on horseback. Big men on big horses, clad in lamella armor and carrying flintlocks, the kind that would mow down a line of enemy soldiers in the blink of an eye. Point at the knights on horseback. Where are they? Franco-Nigerian knights. I used to be very serious about these guys. He looks at the dusty figurines in the dim light. A long, long time ago. <laughs> Inspect the blue uniforms. They're not all blue. These figurines also wear gold coats and caps, complemented by orange trousers. They are variously posed, wielding swords and rifles with bayonets. Wait, this looks like Rene, the old guy who was playing the tank. This is what the loyalists looked like, yes, at first. Then they wised up and got camouflage. <laughs> Instead of being, like, brightly colored. Um, he inspects the figurine. Point at the blue figurines. Are these royalist soldiers? Which ones? Ah, those. Yes, they are. I find the paint job a bit gaudy, but... Children like the bright colors indiscriminately. <laughs> Inspect the figurines and rags. This set of soldiers isn't meant to look impressive. A few have rifles, but most of them carry pistols. Some even shovels and tall sticks. Are these even soldiers? You're probably talking about the revolutionaries, yes? Yes, they are soldiers. Revolutionary soldiers. I think their poverty has been exaggerated for effect. When you place them next to the royalists, it doesn't seem like they could possibly win. It's meant to give people hope. Even we can do it. The contrast is meant to be disheartening, as it ought to be. It's impossible to win against the cohorts of capital. Ask my friend Gart, whose bitch it made me. <laughs> I wish it was more nuanced. As it stands, I cannot comment. It gives people hope. Maybe. Alright. I guess that's it. Oh god. <laughs> Alright, well, I, t I don't see any other option but to ask Tommy. He's not gonna be my friend after this, that's for sure. I'm sorry, dude. I don't have a choice. What? But I told you she's my friend. Please don't make me give her up, detective. Get someone else. There's a ton of drivers here. Put yourself in my shoes. I need this for another investigation, too. It's too important. I can't blow it. You're not going to put a bullet in your head if you blow it, are you? Because she's on the edge, man. I wouldn't be so sure, Tommy. <laughs> Imagine it. An explosion of stars. Goodbye, world of men, <laughs> money, and machines. I don't want to do it. I don't. I have to. She's a suspect and I need you to tell me where she is or I can't finish the investigation. 
I... I thought you were a different kind of cop. Don't say that! Shit! Something breaks in him as he stares into your eyes. The realization that you've used his friendliness and goodwill for your own ends. No! Remember, you're doing it for the bigger investigation. This is important. I'm Relax. so sorry. Ask. Where is the lady driver? Here. He takes a key ring from his pocket, then looks at it before giving it to you in silence. The keys to a motor lorry. Pretty complex. Looks like a chain lock. Her lorry's still here. Down past the statue of Philippe. The cabin is green. You can get in there with these. That's all I know. He gives them to you. When did she leave? Last Friday. He blinks, his eyes half empty now. My heart is broken. I didn't want to do it like this, but I failed that check. Ugh. And there's like no side quests I can do to improve it or to like get more XP. So I'm sorry. I know everyone's really angry right now. <laughs> Anything else? Like where did where is she now? Why do you have the keys? I'm sorry I had to do this. I bet you are. And he's sorry he couldn't be what he wants to be. A good person. His last line. His revenge on the world. Why did you have the keys? She left them to me. Because she trusted me. So I can get it out of the way when the jam breaks loose. Otherwise... He doesn't finish the sentence. The other drivers would have to tow it or break in to get the machines moving. He nods. If they break in, they would find what's hidden inside. <sighs> Something incriminating. Anything else? Like, where is she now? I'm not going to ask that. One more thing. Nah. I need to think my own thoughts now. Pray forgiveness for my sins. Go check your cabin. I hope it gets you something. Help someone. Yeah, it's quietly. I'm sorry, dude. I didn't want to. I wanted to be up that racist guy. <laughs> ah, shit. I feel horrible. Ah, I feel bad. I guess we'll search her cabin now. This green found A to Z. Contempora is parked in the shadow of the ruins looming overhead. It's seen better days. This is the one our men pointed to. Try to peek in the window. The glass on the side windows is tinted and covered with dust. You can barely make out the shape of the seat and two steering levers. I'm so sorry, Tommy. Posters cover the small windows in the back. You can't make out what's on them. Unlock the door. You push the key into the lock and turn. It makes a cracking sound. Then the door pops back a few centimeters. You can just open it. The smell of cigarettes and perfume welcomes you. The cabin inside is plastered with old movie posters. Actresses smile from the walls. There's a radio transmitter in the front and a toolbox tucked under the driver's seat. Some tools lie scattered near the pedals. There's something odd about the passenger seat. The seating fabric has been pulled tight over the lower side hmm. of the seat where the toolbox should be. Uh, admire the posters. <laughs> These are movie posters featuring starlets from long forgotten films from the 20s, the teens, even the 90s of the last century. One of them particularly catches your eye. A centerfold of an ingenue attached right above the back seat. There's definitely perfume in the air. It's spicy with a hint of amberette wafting through the bitter air of the cabin. I wonder if it's meant to cover up something, like using a bunch of perfume to cover up a smell. What's that smell? <laughs> the remnants of a sweet juniper scented perfume, probably grenade number five. Study the centerfold. The actress is draped in a sheath dress, one of her shoulders bared. The faded remains of an autograph run across the poster. She's looking past the camera. Wait, doesn't she resemble someone you know? But you can't put your finger on whom exactly. 
Mm. Clausier? Enough the posters. The actresses and the rear actor all smile you a warm goodbye. A radio transmitter is attached to the dashboard and a toolbox sits under the driver's seat. Ch examine the radio. Looks like the frequency dial is absent. It requires a key to work, but the key has been removed. Hmm. Likely by the missing lady driver. Strange. There are so many radio stations saved here. Must be over 100 at least. Lieutenant leans closer to the radio and hums. Why would anyone need so many radio stations? For contacting an entire fleet of lorrymen, for example. This is all shortwave, UW and UKV. He flicks a switch on the radio. Looks like we are dealing with an impressive organizational tool. The nerve center of a huge operation. With quite a range, too. A 20 kilometer radius, at least. Perhaps extended by an attachable antenna that's not here right now. Hmm. Is there anything else we can do with the radio? Uh, doesn't look like it. It's completely inoperable without the dial key. I wonder why she took the key. What else is here? The ghostly actresses and the rusty toolbox under the driver's seat and the oddly bulging seat cover. Check the pedals. You wedge yourself under the steering wheel to get a better look. Seems like the few tools lying around here, a hammer, a pair of pliers, a rusty wrench have been casually thrown there by the disorganized driver. But one odd detail does catch your eye. A piece of sandpaper has been glued to the throttle. Sandpaper adds extra grip. Hmm. Uh, I guess maybe that's not extremely unusual. Looks like the driver has glued a piece of sandpaper to the throttle to offer some extra grip. She's a lorry driver after all. Sandpaper? A novel technique? Lieutenant repeats. The sandpaper would also rub off the pattern from the driver's right boot sole. Yes. He likes where this is going. He was right. <laughs> Do the honors, he thinks. Connect it yourself. One of the footprints at the crime scene had an aberration. One sole was smoother than the other. Which means that the missing lady driver was present at the lynching. The lieutenant's eyes light up behind his prescription lens. So Ruby really is running a complex operation out of her lorry. At least we can now ask Titus some concrete questions about it. The movie stars are still smiling from the hmm. walls. The radio transmitter sits on the center console and a faint smell of perfume is in the air. I wonder if we'll find the gun. Well, actually, it doesn't make any sense. Why wouldn't she take it with her? Never mind. Fill off the cover on the passenger seat. Voila. A stack of neatly folded papers has been stashed behind the seating fabric. You see three maps depicting a large metropolitan area. It's Revachon. Some of its routes and highways have been outlined with a pen. Bonne prise. I don't know what that word means. The lieutenant commends you as you shift through the treasure well worn and folded into neat squares. Fold out, fold open the topmost map. This large map displays the elevated motorway. Oh, do we get a new map? Eight eighty one. The intake leading to Martinez is marked with a blue X. There's another X on the off ramp at a place called the Old South. Toll booths at the intakes are marked with a circle. It looks like there are scant few ways of getting onto the elevated motorway that runs over Jamrock. And this person knows them all. I think I know where that is. There, hundreds of thousands of motor carriages roar on the 881, high above the mess of brown and red roofs that is Jamrock. The commuters don't even look down. The world ceases to exist outside the windshield. Where does the road lead? To Kuro, through the middle-income neighborhoods there, by the river, and then to Stella Maris and La Delta for work while the men and women of Jamrock scuttle to their fates below the road. Hold open the second map. This municipal map from the 30s displays a complex system of storm sewers underneath a sub-district called the Pox. Old military hospital, right adjacent to the 41st precinct. Our precinct. No storm will ever drown Revachol. The great solution to the riddle of history. 
Wind, wind rips through the empty hallways of the once great military hospital. Now, just a ruin under an overgrown park. Beneath the hospital, great sewer tunnels hum and vibrate with life of their own. What's that sound? The rattle of motor carriages and lorries driving through long forgotten tunnels, lit by gaslights. Look at the third map. The final map displays a labyrinth of service tunnels left over from the construction of Motorway 881. A few routes have been marked with a pen, where the tunnels and sewers surface near the eminent domain and a traffic island in Central Jamrock by the lake. Why would you leave all these maps behind is my real question. These service tunnels were probably used during the construction of the foundation beneath the motorway. Looks like the smugglers have infiltrated the road network belonging to East Motor Tract. The smugglers have infiltrated the motor track. So it would seem. Lieutenant examines the maps with a furrowed brow. The RCM patrols most of these auxiliary roads. Though apparently not all of them. Where does the contraband end up? Hard to say. This distribution network looks certainly large, yet still vague enough. It doesn't reveal much about the Besmerti behind it. Besmerti? That sounds vaguely familiar. The Besmerti is a Revacholian crime syndicate. They see themselves as the inheritors of the 14 Revacholian Indo tribes. But really, they're just violent gangs vying for control on the west side of Revachol. With cool names, like La Puta Madre and Aura Masta, it's a dark parody. He adds with contempt. Who do you think is behind this? It's definitely not the Union. They just do some logistics. This operation has spread everywhere in Jamrock. If it's that widespread, then Madre remains the most likely suspect. Here's bad news. There have been attempts at a serious investigation before, but they haven't any dwell for those involved. Hmm. The lieutenant removes his glasses and polishes them with a handkerchief. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is a brave man for saying Madre's name without the winces and whispers that usually accompany it. Huh. Especially bad news for cops who may have something in their past they don't even know is there. Uh, have I run into this man before? <laughs> Return to the paper. I'm guessing Madre is a crime boss. I'm not sure. I know he mentioned it to the racist guy and I wasn't really sure what he was talking about, but I'm guessing he's just like like the mafia, basically. Return to the stack of papers under the seat. Best not to disturb the scene. I'll have forensics go over the lorry and pick this up later. The stack of maps looks just like before, barely noticeable. The movie stars look silently by, and the pull-out toolbox has a rubber handle, worn from years of use. Pull out the pull-out toolbox. A metallic drawer slides out from the seat. It's empty, except for a folded newspaper. Unfold the newspaper. It's an issue of Petit Ferique from last Wednesday. A piece of paper falls out from its pages. Pick up the note. It looks like an article ripped out from a radio enthusiast magazine. Complex mathematical equations explain the basics of something called the ULAN frequency system. Hmm. These formulas look oddly painful. Maybe it's the hangover, but they give you a headache. The ULAN frequency system? I've never heard of that before. I know of FM, AM, UKV, but... His thoughts trail off. Um, push in the pull-out toolbox. The pull-out toolbox back into its nest. The rest is as it was. Posters, a radio, dust on the windows. I think that's it. Close the rusty old lorry door. Great. I think we got everything. A word, detective? He steps away from Before we return to Joyce. Sorry, he steps away from the lorry. Yes, whenever he wants to talk to me, I always get really scared. Hi. All right, we're finished here. Let's quickly debrief and go over what we found, so we don't do it in front of the company rep. Seems like something police would do. What do you think of all this, Kim? Honestly, I'm quite worried by what we've seen so far. The evidence seems to point to a rather extensive and well-organized operation. I'm especially intrigued by that radio transmitter. 
particularly the sheer number of stations it can connect. Looks like this alleged drug trade cast a wide net. Yikes. This means it's well funded. Technology like that, a major player must be financing it. I'm not sure what the ULAN frequencies are all about, but they may hold some significance. Perhaps it's a better way to connect between fleets while avoiding frequency bleed. Or maybe it's used to tap into RCM networks. Yeah, this whole thing is a lot bigger than I actually thought. Listening in on your calls between you and your station, a worrying prospect. Wait a minute, maybe she has some sort of thing set up in the underground system that she has. Um, when we went into the whole like underground area in the Feld building, we heard this hum. Maybe the hum was like the radio? I think I'm way off the mark, but that was just my guess. <laughs> oh, and the maps we found. They reveal the geographical extent of the operation. Looks like they've used abandoned tunnels and access roads to stay hidden. This is useful info. And last but not least, it's Ruby's cabin we found. This is an undeniable connection to the Union. What about the movie posters? How do they factor into all this? <laughs> I don't think they do. Union really is in neck deep with everything around here, isn't it? Will the RCM open an investigation into this? <laughs> I'm just gonna ask. <laughs> as elegant as they are, I don't think they are relevant to the drug trade. <laughs> don't be fooled. Desire always plays a role. I doubt it. A lot of women in there, especially for a lady driver's cabin. Maybe the traitor is some sort of xenophile? Could the film industry be involved? I don't know what xenophile means. Uh, a lot of women in there. Yes, well... He doesn't say more. Unimportant. Yeah. <laughs> I think so as well. The Union really is a neck deep with everything around there, isn't it? One way or another, they seem to be. Logistically, if nothing else. But don't expect to bust this open during our stay here. At the best, this is an angle we can use against them, to other ends, as extra ammunition. Will the RCM open an investigation into this? We should return to the murder case, see what Joyce tells us about the lynching. When we are done for the day, I call my station and suggest our narcotics department look into it. There are more than enough grounds to start an official investigation, sometime later when we are done here. We do not want to get caught in that. He stops to think. What are you thinking? The fact that one hasn't started already gives me pause. An investigation, I mean. Especially if the Madrid grouping is involved, and I can't imagine they aren't. It certainly worries him. I feel like maybe they know about all this. Corruption? All the same, I don't like the idea of internal affairs descending on the matter. That won't help anyone either. Yeah. Okay. Debrief over? Debrief over. After you. Okay, well, I'm gonna maybe talk to Titus before I talk to Joyce. Uh, see what they say about it first before we talk to her, because I don't think they're as important. can't believe I knocked off the head of that statue. And I can't believe he's not my friend anymore. I feel bad. I feel really bad. I didn't want to do that, but man... I didn't have any other option. I mean, I did, but I failed it, so I just, you know. Hey! <laughs> What's up? The Copper Nado is back. What do you want? He smirks. Uh, <laughs> shouldn't he be nicer to me now? Guess what? I've connected you to the local drug trade. Like hell, you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in Precinct 41 Kilo. Come on, dude. You gotta know that's not true. You really think people aren't doing drugs here. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? We know Ruby was the driver. We know that's your affiliation with her. 
Detective, you want to deliver the coup de grâce? <laughs> you'd have Sunna's notebook. You're right. There's no local drug trade, except you, point at Titus. No, you do the honor. You've earned it, not at the lieutenant. Let's give it to him. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. <laughs> he turns to face the man. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. I feel like this is a lot deeper than just Titus. I feel like Everett knows about it. And I don't think he's going to do anything about it. I think he already admitted it, didn't he? I can't remember. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. <sighs> this is disgusting. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Good idea. People are always going to do drugs. At least this way you have some control over it. Yeah, I keep telling yourself that. I know for a fact there's still plenty of drugs out there. You're admitting to profiting off of poisoning your own people. Boo fucking who? People will always be taking drugs. Might as well do it clean and organized. Keep telling yourself that, bro. Yeah, that's what the labor movement is all about. Clean and organized. And the Hardy Boys are running it. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself. I shouldn't have let him take care of that lady on the boardwalk. I should have done it myself. And what about this Ruby? Is she the eighth hardy who runs things for you? You sure do love long walks through Theory Town, don't you? Well, I'm thirsty now. Thirsty for beer. Got any less theoretical questions, cop? The big guy asked, straightening his cap. He doesn't let it show, but must be a little impressed. You've put a lot of things together fast. Thank you. He's practically saying yes. A yes to everything you said. Yep. Let's ask about Ruby again. Yeah. What? <laughs> Jeez. Do you know what she's doing with the Yulon frequencies? The what now? I have no idea. Boys? He looks around. She said she's building a a pale emitter. I don't like the sound of that. What? We were talking about radio equipment. She said she's doing Yulon frequencies and a pale something. I don't know more. This guy barely understands what he's talking about. There you have it. Pale something. Titus puts an end to it. Thanks for the review, Titus. <laughs> okay, bye. Um, so I know that they said that Ruby knew Harry. And knew, and I feel like she kind of took off and ran away because he's here. So I feel like she's scared of him. No, 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 no. Not Kim. I feel like she's scared of him for some reason. Oh, man, I don't know. Okay, I've traveled back to Joyce. Hi, whoa. <laughs> okay. I spoke with the lawyer man. You're back. Yes, my eyes on the harbor have sent word to that effect. What have you discovered? Wait, where exactly are these eyes located? We have discovered enough to conclude for now. Where are these eyes located? And I do apologize for the surveillance. Wild Pines can't afford to be blind at a time like this. I don't trust you, lady. In any case, it's a relief to know someone has looked into it. If I may ask, will there be an official investigation? I assume you discovered there is an operation. 
I have to be really careful about what I say to her. She's trying to conceal her excitement, but the slight glimmer in her green eyes tells you otherwise. The lieutenant is about to interject. Cut him off. This decision should be yours. Let the lieutenant handle it. If there is an investigation, it will be part of an ongoing operation, subject to confidentiality. I am sure you understand. <laughs> of course, detectives. In any case, you've held up your end of our arrangement. I trust you with the rest. Now it's my turn. Yeah, I I don't think it's smart to tell her much. Um, she says, her tone more cautious suddenly. All right. I wouldn't normally break protocol like this, but the situation demands it. If you don't solve this murder, I'm afraid we may have a bloodbath on our hands. I think she already knows about the stuff going on with Everard. The words bloodbath sound cold in her mouth. They taste of iron and strawberries. What was that about a bloodbath? I've already heard about a connection between lynching and strike, but I need your testimony. Is that about a bloodbath? Yes. I'm afraid this strike may descend into a small-scale civil war, with possible consequences for all of Rivershall West. Since you are sharing, ma'am, this is also the RCM's worst-case scenario. Then we're on the same page, as grim as it may be. I've already heard about the connection. Connection. <laughs> I have an indirect role to play, I'm sad to say. My employer experienced a momentary lapse of faith in me. In that moment, they elected to deploy a private military contractor as an insurance measure. They called it my security detail. A momentary lapse of faith? They were dispatched after I relayed the Union's initial offer. Every worker a member of the board. I tried to convince my employer it was simply a piece of rhetoric and not a serious demand, but the stridency of it seems to have spooked them. Hmm. Oh, I meant to say that. <laughs> Absolutely not. These mercenaries are muscle, pure and simple. They are meant to intimidate the Union into surrendering. I meant to say that part. I guess I just read it in my head and didn't read it all out. Do you need a security detail? These mercenaries must appear in simple. So that must have been what Alice was. Who are they exactly? Right? Ronnie's. Yeah. Cronel, an Oranese military company. As far as I know, three arrived in Martinez. They report to me sporadically, but they do not answer to me. To be frank, our relationship is deteriorating. They wear ceramic armor, have semi-automatic weapons, and years of combat experience. They also have trauma and stressor disorder, and no idea how to conduct themselves in an urban civilian environment. So, what happened? The story is, one of them, the Colonel, I don't know his real name, sexually assaulted a local woman while he was drunk and separated from his unit. This allowed some of the more militant Union members to subdue him. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> so the other people knew about uh, what he was planning to do to Clausier, but that doesn't... I'm so confused. I Okay, I'm just going to shut up. He was taken out behind the whirling in rags and lynched last Sunday night. But we know that's not true. What then? Nothing. Mr. Clare refuses to let me into the harbor. I have not been able to discuss this matter with anyone there. The remaining two Cronell contractors carry out their orders. For now. For now? It's a smokescreen. In secret, they are conducting an independent military tribunal into the lynching. Once this investigation is concluded, executions will follow. Oh, shit. Executions. What is the nature of this so-called investigation? Whether to execute one, some, or all of the Union militants. It will be all of them. The decision is already made. <laughs> I just read this. I had to say, this is not disco. You made, you've made a mess here. 
Maybe the investigations can team up, you know, share resources and intelligence. Boy, oh boy, is that not good. <laughs> you know, share resources. They won't. My only hope is that yours provides a single concrete suspect before they indiscriminately pick theirs. Simply put... She leans against the wooden planks. If you don't pin this on someone good and do it fast, they will identify and execute everyone present at the lynching. This in turn will force the Union to respond. They would have to. To project strength and power. Shit! The Debarder have over 2,000 men. It will be a thousand to one. Have you ever seen a hornet invade a beehive, Lieutenant? It's not pretty. She leans back. These men work in tandem using semi and fully automatic firearms. Their armor is virtually impenetrable to muzzle loaded weapons, even yours. Most Union workers don't have guns at all. Uh huh. As I said, a bloodbath. I can't see it happen. Too many things would have to go wrong first. Isn't this a pretty bleak scenario you're describing? I think confrontation is inevitable. It doesn't have to be like this, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. She looks at you, eyes damp from the wind. One single concrete suspect delivered into civil court, and I may be able to defuse this situation. So, Ruby, <laughs> what can you tell me about Cornell? Not much. Their public resume is relatively good, as far as private military contractors go. I believe they were once called Downwell. They boast a long list of clients. Saint-Baptiste, Welchman Lorenz, Eendracht. A warning sign, however. The operations concerned all take place in third or fourth world countries. Guarding facilities, escort missions and such. Meaning they're used to operating in war zones. Hmm. Yes. All the good conflict corridors, Supramundi, Yesut, the Seminese Islands, countries that don't have a good record reporting atrocious military conduct on their soil. Okay, anything else you got on them? Sadly, no. Before this happened, I had little interest in them. Now that I do, I don't have the resources. If you still have access to the ICP's database, you could run a better background check than I ever could. Hmm. It may take some time, though. She thinks. We'll have to talk to Alice about that. Do you know a lot about the inner workings of the RCM and the ICP, ma'am? In my line of work, it pays to do your research. I was prepared to deal with the RCM. I did not think I'd be dealing with a group like Cronell. Could you contact the company, tell them to call it off? I have. And they will. However, these orders take time to reach what is basically a rogue unit out in the field here. Until they do, it's all on us. So he was the colonel. He was higher up. That's interesting. Uh, you said the deceased assaulted a woman? Or he didn't. This is information passed on to me from some teenagers loitering around the canal. I cannot testify by it. Kuno? <laughs> Who did the passing on, then? The remaining contractors. Their tribunal. It's what they believe. What did these teenagers by the canal say? That the man was killed because he assaulted a local woman. I've asked around a bit. This seems to be the accepted story around Martinez. We know it ain't true. Well, this kind of. This does not come <laughs> as news to us, but still. To your knowledge, where did this assault take place, if you know? Last Sunday <clears throat> night, at the Whirling in Rags, the hostel by the gates. Supposedly, the colonel was drunk, maybe on narcotics, too. Either way, he's alleged to have sexually assaulted a woman. Sometime later, 
A group of dock workers got their hands on him. I know the woman you're talking about. We have it under control. Don't mention it. And who is this woman? That's a good question, officer. I don't have the slightest idea. As I said, it's a rumor. About a rumor. In any case, it's what the colonel's remaining colleagues believe. <laughs> My question is, where the hell are his colleagues? This colonel, the one who was hanged, did you know him? If you mean, did I see him alive? Yes. But I did not know him. You don't know how you know. It's not written on her face, nor in her voice. But she had sympathy for this man. You liked him. Liked is a bit strong. He... He was the most charismatic among them. He handled all the talking. His departure left a major gap in the group's communication skills. He was the most ch charismatic? Well, I guess he did win Claudia Older, so... Should we really be telling her this? His name was... Lely. His service name. A nom de guerre, most likely. He wouldn't divulge his full name. Only one of them did. A bad sign if there ever was one. Tell me about the others first. This Lely, anything else? Nationality? How old would you say he was? Tell me about the others first. One is a man. Corty, they call him. A nickname as well. The other a woman. Phyllis DePaul. Corty is the gunner, I believe. DePaul is a radio operator. What would you say was his eye color? The deceased. <laughs> she closes her eyes, trying to picture the man's face, then shakes her head. I can't remember. There's a pang of regret to her voice. The lieutenant was testing her, asking a small detail first to see if she knew him better than she let on. Hmm. She passed. Didn't even think of that. That's all right, man. Anything else? Nationality? What would you say was his age? I like how we already know all this, but we're just like, Hey, woman, tell us, tell us! <laughs> he was 40. Or 50. It's hard to say which. He had a combat injury on his lower jaw. It made it difficult to estimate his age. Or gauge his spatial expressions. Well, we already knew that, too. This matches the dental reconstruction we saw on the body. And Classier also mentioned it, I believe. What else? Nationality? Accent? He says to you, then turns back to Joyce. He was, uh, Occidental, I think. Light brown hair, a mixed accent, Oranese, or Missinian, maybe. His injury gave him an accent all his own. In a way, it was humanizing. He had to learn to speak through it. Through the injury. That's all I know, I guess. I only met him once. <laughs> Must be hard to force your face to move in a new fashion. If you continue like this, you'll have an aneurysm. Then you'll have to. Hey, to I stopped the expression, alright? I'm doing pretty good. Where are the two- where are the remaining two marks now? They've gone to ground, as it were. I don't recommend seeking them out. For one, they're likely to be armed to the teeth. She raises a cautionary finger. They don't have the same respect for the Revachol citizens' militia as I do. To put it bluntly, they think you're vigilantes. Ghetto savages. It will not be a fruitful meeting. Vigilantes. You're a professional officer of the only legitimate authority in Revachol. Vigilantes? RCM gets his authority from the Coalition. Where did theirs come from? We still need to know where they are. We'll co confront them directly. We'll steer clear for the moment. It's probably not a good idea to confront them directly. <laughs> uh, where does their authority come from? Somehow, I doubt that lecturing them on the legitimate use of force will persuade them to stand down. We still need to know where they are. You're likely to run into them eventually. When that happens, I'll be in a better position to mediate if I don't appear involved. Sent by the Pines, closed didn't fit right, scab leader built like brick, didn't pass background check. The scab leader! Wait, is he the gunner? Where are these mercenaries? 
Oh, fuck you. So you have no idea. There's fuck something you. wrong with your brain. Luckily, the lieutenant still has his. Bro, come on. 97% I still failed it. Fuck you. Okay, I don't usually get that upset, but come on. Ma'am, with all due respect, I've been around Martinez and there's a giant hulk of a man in ill-fitting clothes at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. His heart really isn't in it. I'm so pissed. <laughs> Not a terribly good actor, that one. Still. And the other one. The pole must be in one of the four-story buildings overlooking the roundabout. She was reporting back to you while we were canvassing the lorry drivers. At least Kim's smart. <laughs> that would afford a good vantage point. Still, I hope you heed my advice. There's no need to kick the hornet's nest. I'm so pissed. <laughs> How much time do we have? Until the executions start? Truthfully, I don't know. It depends on their progress identifying the members of the lynch mob and their impatience. They don't report their progress to you? Not on this matter. I'm afraid they consider this a personal initiative. There's a brief silence. Seagulls squawk over the bay. It's a matter of days, not weeks. It's enough for now. I am sorry to have been the bearer of bad news. If there is anything else I can help you with, please ask. I guess I'll ask about the tattoos now. Of course. Excuse my hesitation before. She reaches over the guard wire and hand takes a photo, holds it in her hand. For, half for a about <laughs> half a minute in silence. She wears fingerless gloves. Her fingernails are cut short and fractured, like those of a working woman. It was taken with a trigger not long ago. This is the man's upper body. There were no more markings on his hands or legs. Stay quiet. Observe the woman's expression. Her mouth is relaxed. The accordion lines near her mouth vanish. The pearls of her eyes move slowly on the photo's surface. She has no excess of emotions for this cadaver. Has she seen dead bodies before? It's likely. What do you think? Uh, sorry. I was trying to see if I can read the web of interdependencies between these points. The stars. She points to the one on the paper. I can't. But that's how you read this story. The points themselves don't have letters, numbers, anything. Their size, location on the body, and distance from each other tells you what they represent. Um... Like, blooms and pattern? Close. Port cities. This is an Oranese map of the waterways. A sailor's tattoo worn by wayfarers of the Dolorean century. Over 300 years ago. The sailors would mark their bodies to map their travels. Oh, well, we already knew that as well. What is the use of this map? What travels did the dead and make? What's the use of this map? The sailor's soul would use it to fly back home if they should die abroad. This is a sort of contraption to be reeled back in by. The silver cord, they would call it. Where is he now? This one is going nowhere but the morgue. I've spoken to him. For now, the soul is fastened inside his corpse. This one has flown quite far away by now. Nowhere, there is no soul. This one has flown quite far by now. I would say he's near the Arcade Islands by now. Ready to exit the Insel Indian and into the Pale. If I've read his home address correctly. She smiles. What travels did the dead man make? Quite a few. Vredefort, the Oranese capital, traditionally stands on the right shoulder. He started somewhere near here, I think. She points to it on the photo. What next? Then he made his way to the Pretto Grangi, 
through what I think must be the Stutz Canal, an artificial channel through the Occident. From the Pleto, he sailed to the Insulindic Ocean, first the Semenese Islands, then this. She points to his heart. What is that? Revachol. Those are the two constants. Redefort on the shoulder, and Revachol in the heart. They started the tradition of these maps right after the discovery of Insulinde, at the dawn of the Interislary Age. The old, old world passing by, and the new, new world already here. You said you can't read it. I can't. This man nice. was no sailor. And these are no ports. I can understand geographic fragments, but not their meaning. In Martinez, looking into Crenel, he writes in one. Then the man puts down his pen and rubs his temples with both hands. Outside, distant gunshots on the streets of the Jamrock Quarter. This man is no brother of mine, but this is his service history. That makes sense to me. We have no more use for a map of the waterways, just like we don't need sailors the way we used to. This is what the custom would morph into on the Occident. Mercenary tattoos. For all the boys looking for an adventure, a blood spatter on the seas. Who could tell me more? His platoon members? The other contractors. Though I do not suggest you go and show them that picture. This man was their friend and comrade. Unless they're the ones who killed him. <laughs> I don't know. The gun that was used to kill him seemed awfully like theirs. It could go this or the other way. Maybe if you're tactful, it could be beneficial. Maybe. Challenge accepted. I said. Uh, we don't have to, but I'll just do it to get the task. I need the information. Mark it down. Ask the mark about tattoos. Do what you have Scab to do, leader. Detective Dubois. I don't think deciphering that tattoo should come before public security. But if you should wade into the mob to find out, I couldn't stop you. All right. We will be careful, ma'am. That's all for the tattoos. Thank you for your help. Is there anything else I can help you with? That's it. Damn, we got a lot of information. Kim was all the way back here. What are you doing, dude? Um, I have two skill points. I'm thinking I'll unlock a thought slot. Ask Scab Leader about the tattoo. Perhaps another mercenary can tell you about more about the hangman's tattoos. The so-called Scab Leader at the Harbor Gates. It won't count as one of the people informing you about the tattoos, but it could be interesting. <laughs> I'm kind of scared to talk to him. Alright, let's unlock one. Unlock. Alright. <laughs> what should I... <laughs> what should I do? <laughs> <laughs> Homosexual underground. <laughs> I want to do that one. I'm sorry. I know it's probably going to just be ridiculous, but it makes me laugh. Alright. Let's go to bed. It's already kind of late. It's getting cold. Night, Kim. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. <sighs> okay. My back. <laughs> My back is hurting. I'm so pissed that I failed that check. I need to stop screaming. It just feels so shitty. Like, there should be such a small chance that you fail ones like that. But for me, it seems like every freaking high chance check that I do. Ah, uh, alright. Anyway. Wait, 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 wait. Can we look at ourselves now? An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it. Such as it is, without the expression. It's just hairy. <laughs> but oh, psh. Night. Good night, world. The bed is comforting. If Go to sleep. A new day approaches. The Turns place out. feels almost oh. like home now. Quiet and dignified around you. A new life by the seaside. You're incredibly tired. The darkness and warmth come fast. You're falling asleep. Um, 
What was I going to say? <laughs> I was just going to say that we only have a limited amount of time now before they start executing the people that they think is involved, so that's not good. Oh. No it's nightmares? It's easier oh. this time. <laughs> there we go. Drifting off, your head has found a comfortable indent in the pillow. Your legs and your torso feel like lead weights sinking to the bottom of the sea. Until they're suddenly light. This respite, you've earned it, brava. Bask in the darkness. Let it swallow you up and swivel you around while you forget everything you've managed to remember. I've been bad. I haven't earned this. Is this the last dream? No. This is the one before that. <laughs> we'll just keep cycling it for you if you don't mind. As long as we can. Spin it like black yarn. Enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> Thank you, Darkness. Thank you. You're welcome, Harry boy. You earned it. Fall into a deep, uninterrupted sleep. After centuries of darkness, the alarm rings. But what's this? You actually feel rested. There's no time to cuddle with your pillow, however, or as much as shiver from the cold. The world awaits. Go. Open your eyes. Wow. My, uh... Parts of my brain said, uh... Hey, just go to sleep, all right? We don't feel like giving you hell tonight. <laughs> Thanks. Limbic system in an ancient reptilian brain. Wonder what's in store for us on day six. Wow. Day six. Oh. What should I wear? <laughs> Let's switch back to our classic coat. Take off these stupid glasses. There you go. Alright. Good morning world and all who inhabit it. <laughs> I don't trust this. It was too peaceful last night. What's going on here? I don't like it. Do do do. Do do do. Good morning! Oh, uh, oh god. Hi. I'm stuck. <laughs> Morning. Nothing new to say? Alright, so. We can talk to... I've been trying to do this. Determine when the shot came from, but... I can't, for some reason. It's just not letting me, like... Do anything. Dang, the drunk dudes are gone. No! <laughs> Where'd they go? Hi, children. The scruffy-haired little boy kicks a stone while the other watches him do it. Kids, have you seen any bad people around? What bad people? They're so cute. One of the twins looks up, his mouth slightly open. I don't think questioning four-year-olds without their parents' presence is going to crack the case. Says the lieutenant. Then we're definitely doing it. Alright, bye. I think we might have to explore under the Feld building now that we've done everything with Joyce. Hmm. I'm just gonna see if anything's changed around here before we do that. All right, let's interview this fool with a shirt too big for his body, too small right for his to body. Work. Right to work. Shame on you. I wasn't done asking questions. Things are busy enough. You're going to waste less of my time. We'll see. The Hulkin man oozes stark skepticism. I think you may be able to help me decipher some tattoos. Take out the picture. Don't think so. He grunts, barely glancing at it. Suddenly, this feels like a really, really bad idea. Should I save it? We're investigating a murder. These tattoos were on the victim's body. Give him the photo. Silence. He takes the photo. Gray eyes dart back and forth on the glossy surface. His face is unmoving. Hard as a stone. But beneath it, 
You see dead flesh in colorful rivers of polychrome, melting skin. And Should I be doing this? <laughs> fucking loincloths. Really did him in. After a while, he cranes his head side to side and sighs. Um, loincloths? Yeah. He's clenching his teeth. There is silent pressure behind them. Can you tell me what the f tattoos mean? What it means? He points to one tiny star on the web of lines, away from the man's heart, almost on his stomach. I can tell you what this one means. Only one. You want to hear what happened here? He squints at it. It's so small. Yes? Our colonel is deep in the bush here. Deep in the fucking bush in Benital. 41. He admits Monsoon it. Monsoon season. He's on a reconnaissance mission. He spent a month behind enemy lines, scouting kipped villages. Nothing but fucking bugs and snakes for fun. Men are getting restless. There's talk of switching employers. He licks his lips as if drunk suddenly. With some strange emotion. This is about to get really graphic. Last moment to back off. Don't interrupt him. Our boy. He's only a captain then, but he knows how these men think. If they don't see action soon... His voice gets strangely quiet, a long, long way from right to work. His gaze pierces the paper. At dawn, he comes upon two kips, breeding in the bushes by the river. Or maybe they weren't breeding. Maybe they were just making eyes at each other. I like to think they were breeding. Breeding. We shot the boy. He was useless, but the girl, she was nice. A little fat, you know. But not too old. Okay, this isn't useful. What's the matter, militia man? No stomach for it? This man was worth a thousand loincloths. We're done talking here. Wow, okay, he looks at the photo in your hands and smiles. I think we should maybe even get going now. Lieutenant turns to you. There is absolutely no need to push this any further. He clearly does not think poking the hornet's nest is a wise plan anymore. Yeah. We're out. Bye. Jeez. That is disgusting. I do not need to hear the rest of that story. Thank you very much. I think it's time to go check out the you-know-what. Let's do it. See if we can find Ruby. Alright. Let's go. I'm extremely nervous, but let's do it. I think... I think we did everything. The cryptozoologist thing is done. That's over and done with, I think. Besides, we didn't find the phasmid, but maybe we'll find it later on and then send Lena a note or something. I don't know. But as far as the union stuff goes, I think we did everything. We talked to Titus. Huh. Let's hope so. I saved it, just in case. Because I'm a little nervous. I wonder if I should put on armor. Should I put on armor? Just in case. Well, maybe not. It downs my, um... It downs. It lowers my empathy. I don't know. We'll see. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Oh. Concrete pipe buried in sand and dust. Feels strange. Nice. Nice! <laughs> I can buy that t-shirt in Roy's pawn shop. My dreams have come true. Oh shit! Suddenly, your oh entire my God. body is paralyzed. Oh. Aggressive white noise fills your skull. A strange pain like you've never felt before. Through the static, oh, you shit. hear a woman's voice. Hi! It's like a thousand radio stations are being blasted into your head all at once. But her words are the only ones you can make out. Oh, God. I know you're feeling pretty uncomfortable right now. Don't move too much or fight it. That'll just make it worse. Hi, Ruby. Ruby the instigator. Oh shit. 
says the shadowy figure by the machine. Oh, God. I can't say it's a pleasure, officer. I was really hoping not to make your acquaintance. But here we are. Shit. As she says the word, officer, we feel a spike in the agony. It sounds like the entire radio frequency range is screaming directly into your neural pathway. Cover your ears. No, buddy. That's not going to help. You can't shield yourself from this. It's an entirely new type of experience. Way worse than all the previous ones. Shit. Don't focus on the pain. Focus on doing your job. Tell her she's under arrest. Yell through the static. You're under arrest. What's happening to me? Are you gonna kill me too? Help Kim, help, my brain's on fire! <laughs> Lieutenant clutches his head as his eyes roll back into his skull. Oh shit. The torment Lieutenant Kitsuragi is experiencing is worse than your own. He's trying to resist, oh, God. but there's no way of knowing when he will recover. Fuck. I'm using a pale latitude compressor. You and your partner have been caught in its field. The explosion of static you're hearing is the ULAM frequency. I should be wearing my my headphones. Blasted from that pale emitter that Angus mentioned. Oh God! I saw your equations. It's the Yulon frequency. Saw my equations? You've been sniffing through my lorry, right? I expected as much. I am a bit surprised you knew what you were looking at. <laughs> oh, what about Kim? Right behind you, officer. Eyes closed. The lieutenant is doubled over. He's still alive and breathing. Oh, a God. <laughs> is used to sort of make the pale more manageable. With a lot of these, you can force a radio signal grid on the pale. Literally crunch the distance across it. I'm so scared. Please don't hurt Kim. Oh. Signals are relayed across a series of repeater stations fixed to buoys. Not a fun job manning those stations. All alone out there in the pale, people lose their minds in just a few years. Girl, what is your purpose here? So, what we are experiencing is a concentration of radio waves. He gestures towards something with great effort. Precisely. This is an industrial strength paraboloid. It's meant for forcing dimensions on something that doesn't have them. Needless to say, the frequencies used are out of this world. At the upper limit is the large prime number generator station. It's used specifically for pale latitude compression. That's why you may be hearing some numbers. But you might also hear, or think you're hearing, local radio chatter. She's speaking very calmly. She's been holed up in here for a while with no one to talk to. Keep her talking. And you just might get an opportunity to break the loose. Uh, what's this goddamn pale anyway? The pale? It's the end of the world. Oh, how did you get your hands on this thing? I broke it myself. She nods towards her torture device. That's illegal. <laughs> I'm guessing it's patented. But we are beyond that, aren't we? I think so. Oh yeah, way beyond. She studies her death ray and the law officials trapped in it. Gee, thanks, lady. Will I stay like this forever? No. Once I shut down the compressor, the pain will end. It may take a few minutes for you to steady yourself, though. It's a bit like waking out of a very confusing dream. Jeez. Have you experienced the compressor yourself? Yeah. I stuck my head in there before using it on you. It seemed like the ethical thing to do. Can't say that I enjoyed it. The field was weaker, but I can imagine what you're going through. This is great, but let's talk about the man who was killed. Yeah, let's not talk about that shit. You were hunting me and fell into my trap instead. That's all there is to say about it. So she thinks of you as hunters, not the cops. And of herself, merely as prey. Could you just turn it down so I can ask you something? If you've got something really important to say, you can do it through the white noise. Lieutenant clutches his head, grimacing. God damn it. She regards you akin with sudden sympathy. Fine. If you really want to talk, I can dial it down. 
I've also got a gun, by the way. She steps aside, reluctantly out of the shadows. The pain lessens. Whew. At least it's a little better, right? The gun she's carrying is a two-barreled front loader, mm. not like the murder weapon. Damn it. Mm. Well, it doesn't feel much better, but she can form sentences now. Thinking doesn't seem to hurt as much. Just keep her talking, and you'll get through this. Oh, shit. How did you know we were coming? Did you shoot Lely? How did you know we were coming? I heard you in the passages, and I've been preparing for quite a while. By hiding bullets under floorboards? So you found my shack, huh? I'm not surprised. Her tone is bitter. She thinks she's been betrayed. She didn't rat you out, by the way, the washerwoman. So nice. That's one knife I didn't want to find in my back. She smiles a little smile. Preparing for the worst? You're desperate, aren't you? I was. Before I caught you in the pale latitude compressor. I'm fine now. That's her admitting the bullet was an emergency exit. Did you shoot Lely? No, I didn't do it. I only helped stage the lynching. Though I doubt that makes much of a difference to you. Who ratted me out, by the way? Was it Titus? No, he wouldn't have broken first. You're right, Clausier was the first to share her suspicions. It was your girlfriend she cracked. Share her suspicions. Oh, I knew the kitten had claws, but not like this. Were they in love? She smiled sadly. But she couldn't have known I was on the coast. How did you find me? Your first guess wasn't entirely off. Your own boys told us you were on the coast. Titus told me. It took some convincing. First guess wasn't entirely off. Titus and his boys, man. They told us you were on the coast. Even now, Kim is a paragon <laughs> of professionalism. He is trying to make a clean cut of telling her she was betrayed. Well, fuck. Those guys liked me, I know it. If this is what happens to people whom people like... A dull despair is creeping into her voice. How the fuck did the rest of you get by? <laughs> Wait, wasn't it you who called me the human can opener? It's not personal. I open them up. I do it by asking questions and I have some for you. Honestly, I don't know how to do it. I just stumbled in here. Can you please explain this shit to me? It's not personal. I opened them up. I did, didn't I? Now you've come for me. Fuck them all the same. She scoffs. That did make her forgive them. A little. I do it by asking questions, and I have some for you. Like what? I already told you I didn't do it. A strong moral compass. She still wants the opportunity to make a case for herself. Would you say Lely was a likable person? Do you have an alibi for when Lely was shot? You have my- you have a gun. Did you leave any flowers for Clausier on the roof? Oh! See, she is in love with her. You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. Did you say Lely was a likable person? I didn't like him. Hardened mercenaries aren't particularly likable types. Did you feel protective of the Union? Yeah, sure. And I didn't like wild pines sending in those foreign hirelings. Me and a fuck ton of other people around here. She didn't hate him, okay? Hmm. You don't feel sympathy for mercs? It's hard to work. Plenty of broken people who don't come with that kind of body count. Besides, they're paid well for what they do. I have other questions. I'm listening. Do you have an alibi for when Lily was shot? Man, I was with the boys the whole night. I hope they at least bothered to impress that upon me. There were ten minutes they couldn't account for. They did say you left to take a really long week, fifteen minutes. It was half an hour missing. You went out. Like fuck I did. I was in all the time. I went for a leak, 10-15 minutes max. No one takes a 15 <laughs> minute leak. <laughs> Lieutenant winces from the pain. Look, fuck you, man. I might also have stopped by the bar. She speak of truth. Thank you, Drama. You have a gun. And? Where did you get it? The gun store. What gun store? Trigger Happy Jacks. Doesn't sound like the name of a real store. What did you think? That I'm going to squeal on my gun supplier? Sorry, not that kind of gal. 
I see it's a front loader. Do you have another gun somewhere? Sure don't. The breach loader? No. This is such a white map. I can't tell. What kind of gun is that? A knocked way 80 front loader. Two barreled. Not really what you were looking for, I'm guessing. That isn't it. Do you collect guns? Maybe old rifles? No, they're not practical. They break too often. Wince. There's another evidence. There's other evidence I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, evidence. Did you leave any flowers for Clausia on the roof? No. Gifts of flowers and candy aren't really my style. These weren't just flowers. They symbol symbols of revolution. So now I'm leaving revolutionary symbols around. Come on. But Clausia was mourning. I never did understand why, when someone dies, a hothouse's worth of flowers has to die too. So you didn't leave Maybell's? Mm -hmm. No, I did not. You're running drugs for the Union. I've been through your lorry. So, heart of gold Tommy fucked me over too. Never trust a musician. She shakes her head slowly. I'm sorry. Well, that really comes as a blow to me. No, he didn't. I found my own way in. Lie. Okay, great. You got into my lorry on your own. What now? You're going to arrest me for drug trafficking? A bitter smile. Beneath it, she's relieved. Tommy didn't betray her. Okay, great. Lying solves, ev solves everything. You're a criminal. I can't trust anything you say. You had financial incentive to kill the Merc. Man, it's to get away from all that murderous shit that I left Jamrock, my previous employer, for the Union. Oh god, the lieutenant is unable to articulate this question. She deliberately avoided naming the mob she worked for. You might be able to find this out later. I got lucky being a dispatcher. Never had to do any of the really dirty work myself. This gun has only been used for self-defense against serious scum. She turns the knob down just a millimeter. Then, it's going to be easier to reach the machine now. But you're threatening us with it. Based on what I've heard about you, you are serious scum. She responds, holding your gaze. There's a sinister note in her voice. Even with the gun and the compressor, she's afraid of you. Take a step back. Yeah? Where? More. More questions before doing anything. <sighs> Who killed the Merc if it wasn't you? How should I know? As I keep saying, he already had a bullet in his head when I got to him. And there hasn't been any useful gossip over the radio. Those rings around her eyes. Her tired voice. She's been staying up late, listening in on the conversations crisscrossing Martinez. So it wasn't her. What is radio? You've been following the case? Who hasn't? You know, I can still see him there, in Claus's room, lying on his side. He was still warm. But the bluish light coming through the broken window made him look as though he'd been dead for a good long while. What happened Sunday night? Tell me your version. She eyes you warily, as though gauging your sincerity. It's okay. We just want to... Uh, uh. He struggles to finish the sentence. I'm sorry. All right. Don't kill yourself over it. I was shooting the shit with Hardy and the boys over a few years, like always. Then Klasia comes in, all pale and shuddering. She sits down with a drink, trying to steady her nerves. So I grab a seat next to her. Wait, did she seem high to you? Oh yeah, super. But I didn't think too much of it at first. I'd seen her party hard before. Klasia, you said you knew something was wrong immediately. No, so I really didn't. She's not that easy to read. I just assumed she'd done too much blow. It wouldn't be a first for her, but no such luck. She was in some deep shit. Yeah, she is. She asked me to come upstairs. The merc she'd been going with was lying on the bedroom floor, dead. I knew she couldn't get the authorities involved, so yeah. You made it look like it'd been hanged. How did you manage to come up with a plan so quickly? It's pretty weird that you came up with this plan right on the spot. How did you do that? What? No. Faking a lynching was her idea. Really? She looks shaken. She wasn't surprised to be ratted out, but afraid. Oh, fuck. 
Claudia is so such a liar. Her idea? Yeah, in cold blood. It really surprised me how quickly she was able to get a hold of herself once we got up there. It was like she was another person. The party girl was gone. You can see it. Her lips, though still white, don't seem to tremble as much anymore. She moves with focus and deliberation. She asked me to help her drag him into the shower so she could wind the shower head around his neck to fake lividity. Then she dressed him while I went to get the Hardy Boys. Damn it. Glossy knew exactly what she was doing. You can't remain calm under pressure otherwise. Shower head? Resourceful. That's bad that she'd be so calm. Yeah. I wasn't sure whether to admire her or be disturbed. Do you think she killed Lily herself? And potentially bring attention to herself? No. Besides, the shot was made from a distance. Otherwise, we would have heard it downstairs. Hmm. She's yeah. Right. No one mentioned hearing the shot. I... The shot didn't come from the roof. <laughs> Are you alright? You should have factored this in. Damn it. Yeah, well... I mean, I tried to do that, but I... I don't know where to look. I, I was looking on the boardwalk and everything, but nothing was popping up for me to investigate. But even if this is true, weren't you worried the lynching might lead to... Lieutenant forces himself to finish the sentence. He, do he like, seems strained some parts and the other parts he doesn't. War? The thought crossed my mind. But the mercenary's death was going to have repercussions either way. Although the way things are going... She doesn't want to talk about this, but not because she has something to hide. She doesn't want the guilt. Eh, yeah, fuck it. I'm not responsible for these people after what they did to me. If you didn't kill him, why hide? I saw you roll into town. I wasn't about to stick around for questioning by a goddamn La Puta Madre agent. What do you mean, La Puta Madre agent? Yes, you. Everyone says you're his peon, his human can opener. I work for him? Oh, fucking hell. Oh, are you okay? I heard him say fucking hell. Uh, do the sun, sun sharp pain in your head lead to hear the lieutenant mumble something goes up. Fucking hell. And why me? You hear speeding. <laughs> I heard that. It's especially bad suddenly. Felt like a vein exploded. Who's everyone? How do you know this? Bullshit. You're trying to. Wince grotesquely. Throw me off. No one says that. Oh, yes, they do. The cops? The criminals? Why do you think I'm holed up in here with a goddamn death ray waiting for you? If she knows that about you, she must know your real name, too. Shit, I'm into some shady stuff, aren't I? Tell me, what's my name? If you know that about me, you must know my name. Harry Dubois. One corrupt motherfucker with a disco pants and a funny tie. Agent to La Puta Madre. Son of a bitch. Did someone mention a fucked up tie? <laughs> I call bullshit. You're too crazy to be corrupt. Kim, don't hate me, please. So she knows your name. That doesn't mean you're on the tape. Criminals make up bogeyman stories about cops all the time. All of this just means that you're effective. Criminals know you and are scared of you. Yeah. I don't know. Sounds pretty convincing to me. La puta madre. I've heard of La puta madre. He's dangerous, right? Is that a joke or a threat? I'm guessing both. Sorry, I know I'm supposed to know all this, but I lost my memory recently. No, that was a real question. Yeah, sure. She doesn't believe you. I'm sure La puta madre himself will explain it all to you soon enough. What did you do to this madre anyway? You've been to my lorry. You think the biggest player in Jamrock appreciates competition? Now I have Harry can open her in my lair. <laughs> Fucking Titus. Shit. She's not going to change her mind that easily. She still perceives you as a threat. Wait, one thing. Possibly small, but she said you rolled into town. Was that you singular or plural? She might know something. When I came into town, was there anyone with me? Yeah, you had your death squad with you. What happened to them, anyway? I don't know what happened to them. Who was in this squad? Well, it wasn't this scrawny dude. 
Fuck you. Two guys and a lady. The guys look pretty buff. Lady wasn't bad either. Was I working with the hangman? Wait a minute. No way. That's not. No. What else can you tell me? One of the guys seemed chipper, a blonde. The other had a brooding something or other about him. And the woman. The woman was the only one. Okay, maybe not. All were carrying. Maybe not. That sound about right? No idea who these people are. Literally. Satellite My old partner? There, looks out of the window grimly, then puts his coffee down and turns to patrol officer Miller. You know, we could either take a room here in the world or go home for today. Let's go home, Jean. Nothing's going to happen today, she responds quietly. Jean takes his blonde wig off. Call Hydostem. He can give us a ride. Blonde wig. Okay, they are my old partners then. I think I know them. They're in Martinez. Break, Jean. Lock. Set. Run and leave me here. Please delete. Fantastic. I've got to get on the road. Then you can go find your friends. Unless you have anything pressing to ask me. Do you know about the bunker next door? What bunker? Communist hideout back there. Don't know anything about it. No one's been around since I set up camp. But I'm sure I'm not the first vagabond to... Her voice trails off into the white noise in your head. It feels like an aneurysm approaching. Oh, shit. Let's try it. Hey, I did it! <laughs> Oh god. Come on. Come on, Harry. Please don't get shot. You did it. <sighs> the compressor lies broken on its side. It's quiet in your head again. It still hurts like hell. But... <sighs> Whisper over your shoulder. You okay, Kim? <sighs> All good, officer. Be careful. The Lieutenant Hunch is recovering. She looks at the machine, assessing the damage. Her hand trembles. <sighs> oh, fuck it. <gasps> oh, God. Oh, God. No, 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 no. What are you doing? Problem solving. She mutters. Ma'am, put the gun down. That's not the solution to your problems. You are... Oh, yes, it is. Convince her to put the gun down. Oh, fuck me. Rhetoric. Okay. Please. She's truly <sighs> desperate. She thinks she has no other options. You need to give her options. What options? You know. Maybe I can still talk her out of it? This is how you talk her out of it. It's the only scenario in which she lives. Please, put your hands up. Just walk away. She stares at you, frozen, the gun still in her mouth, eyes filled with dark intensity. Then something shifts in her. Gratitude. Doubt. She's still ready to go. Her neck and shoulders relax, and her grip on the gun loosens. You don't have to do this. You're not cornered. I'm letting you go. Day of miracles. I'll take it. She says, pulling the gun out of her mouth, eyes still fixed on you, then she turns her gaze to the tunnel behind you. She runs past you, then past the lieutenant, and disappears into the darkness of the tunnel. I didn't want to have to do that, but... Good call. Yeah. You sure? The lieutenant is still unsteady on his feet. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I would have done the same had I not been incapacitated. He has to catch his breath. What if she... What if we just let the murderer go? I didn't... I think she didn't do it. I think she did it, but I didn't want her to die. I think she didn't do it. Her tent. We should check it out. He points to the back of the cavern. Ooh! <laughs> oh, God. Okay. At least I passed that check. Holy shit. Ruby's gone. Go to her tent. At least she didn't die. That was probably the best case scenario that could have happened. Oh! 
Oh, geez, that was a lot. Okay, wow. <laughs> that was really stressful. I think it ended up being the best outcome it could have been. I wonder if she has Clazzy's documents. That's my guess. Dark water trails in the distance. There's no way out. I'm glad she didn't die. Draw, draw I mean? <sighs> Cooking utensils. She has prepared herself porridge with bananas. Eight dollars? Yeah! <laughs> the plain red tent stands by dispassionately. Look inside. The tent looks old, but well maintained. In the darkness of the tent, a rolled up sleeping bag, cooking utensils, some books, and a kerosene lamp. It reeks of cigarettes. Look at the books. Assorted soft covers, mostly pulp horror. A motor carriage lies buried in the snow on one cover. On another, a ghost airship. You also see a collection of radio enthusiast magazines. See anything? Lieutenant peeks in over your shoulder. Sifts through the magazines. Rager Monthly. Journal of Material Science. More Technological Digest. One of the magazines doesn't have images on the cover. It's not a magazine. It's a leather notebook. A notebook? You pocket the worn brown leather journal. Ruby's journal. A trusted friend left behind. We should read this immediately. Like, right now. Okay, I will. Is there anything the else? Red. Okay. Okay. Ruby's journal. A well-loved journal with a brown leather cover and brand named Schell Schnell Sch Schneller embossed on the back. It seems to have served as a loyal friend to a lonely traveler. A thick journal. The cover is worn like someone used to carry it around in their back pocket. Examine the cover. It's made of full grain leather. The lower left corner of the back cover sports an embossed brand name. Schneller. Schneller. This was important to her. When it was still hers. Sorry, Ruby. You did threaten to kill us, though. Unwind the strap. Move on. The journal falls open. About two-thirds of its ruled pages have been filled. Study the handwriting. The large cursive of someone who writes quickly and confidently. Perhaps too confidently. Many phrases and even paragraphs have been crossed out, with tiny corrections scrawled above and in the margins. Flip through the pages. It's a mix of logistical notes, diagrams, and personal reflections, all dated. It's good she left in a hurry. We could learn a lot from this. What kinds of logistics? Hard to tell exactly. It's mostly noted down in code. Looks like contact information, quantities, directions. There could be useful information about local operations in those notes. We have a junior sergeant at my station who's good with codes. I can give this to her after we finish this. What are the diagrams of? Esoteric radio technology. The most recent ones probably pertain to the latitude compressor, sketches, calculations of distance and density. You make out a familiar spiral shape. Anything personal? I wonder if Suna would know anything about this. Anything personal? Short, wry observations of people and places. Probably a way to pass the time on the road. Also, what appears to be attempts to sort through some difficult decisions. There are a few passages with many questions in them. Staff issues. Always tough on the leadership. You smell traces of betrayal. How far back do the entries go? The first entry is from August 2nd of last year. It reads simply, I know my position is precarious. All I can do is make myself as useful as I can while looking for a way out. Remember, no one is indispensable. Uh, what did she write the day Lely died? Nothing on March 4th. March 5th, though. Well, that's bound to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm bad at this. Loyal to a fault. Except, but that's another matter entirely. Hmm, I do believe Ruby, and obviously... Clausier has a lot of explaining to do. You have no idea what she means. These are personal notes. Don't expect to understand all of it. I personally think Ruby was maybe in love with Clausier, so she kind of was loyal to her because of that, loyal to a fault. 
And you think about La Puta Madre, which apparently <clears throat> people think I'm a part of? That name isn't mentioned, as far as you can tell. Small wonder. Would you talk about La Puta Madre in your journal? You do see an M, though. La Puta Madre? M is mentioned on March 9th and March 15th. Read the entry from March 9th first. Great. M's peon is coming to town, no doubt to investigate the lynching. But also, I feel it in my gut to finally put a bullet in my head while I'm napping in my lorry or on a smoke break. Well, I won't stick around just to twist my own neck by constantly looking over my shoulder. Jeez. Then again, isn't that what I've been doing ever since I got the call? Were you supposed to find her, even apart from the investigation then? On M's request? Hmm. No, you wouldn't do something like this. This must be a mistake. You didn't follow through. You should have shot her in the head. This is a coincidence. I would never kill people for a mob boss. The thought steadies your nerves. The journal stops shaking in your hand. Read the entry from March 12th. Been holed up here for three days now. I'm used to being alone and all, but I don't know when I'll be able to leave or if I'll be ratted out. They will rat me out, of course. I've made it a point to believe in the best in people. The boys, for example. But experience tells me. Did M feel truly betrayed by me? I was feeling threatened. He'd have to know if he threatened people. They'd take measures to protect themselves. Even I know that. Economic measures, first of all. Gotta make a living, right? I can still hear his voice in the receiver. Taste the plastic. The entry ends abruptly. Threaten people to take measures for John themselves. What's the most recent entry? The most recent entry is from today. It reads, Even when I leave here, if I leave here alive, what's my next move? Staging a lynching is a crime, <sighs> even if I'm not accused of murder on top of that. Forever on the run. Not really my idea of the open road. Man, I was really looking forward to winning. Winning. It looks like she might have been framed. Lieutenant taps on the page. That would be a first, or a fourth. But who's counting, he thinks. Very rarely does anyone actually get framed. If she didn't do it, then maybe it's good that we didn't catch her? I wouldn't go <laughs> so far as to say that. We have other reasons to arrest her. He frowns. Yeah. Besides, I'm not sure her life as a fugitive is going to be much better than we does. Especially if she has problems with the Madre. Kim, am I really a La Puta Madre agent? Ah, <sighs> no, I don't think you are. Ask someone in your precinct if you want to be sure. He looks you straight in the eye for a moment. He truly does not believe you are. Perhaps he shouldn't be so trusting. I hope I'm not. His trust is well placed. You aren't. You can feel it. Thank you, Volition. Who do you think killed the Merc? Could have been Titus. Then again... He pauses to think, but no one heard the shot. Seems plausible. I don't know. T-Man wouldn't fuck me over. <laughs> but no one heard the shot. Maybe there's a hardy boy we've yet to meet who acted as his accomplice. Either way, we need to keep an eye on him. Yeah. One thing is for certain. We have business back in the whirling and rags. Questions to ask. We should get to it. All right. I think maybe I will go back and ask if I really am a corrupt cop real quick. Before we talk to anyone, I'm going to see what they have to say because I am really curious. And I hope not because I don't want to break Kim's trust. I don't, I don't think I am. I mean, there's no way to know. I'm not really the same person that I was. I don't really like the fact that she's running around with a loaded gun, but, you know, what can you do? What can you do? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Stop. Now. It is time. <laughs> For what? Crisis. Death. You can feel it in your blue soul. What am I supposed to do? Be prepared. Make sure you have your pepper box in your hand. What? Your fingers reflexively reach for the Villiers 9mm pistol in your pocket. 
I'm not sure I feel ready for what lies ahead. Then you'd better get ready. Whatever happens, I've got your back. He frowns and quickly adds. What did I do to deserve you? <laughs> what does that mean, though? <laughs> I'm scared. Oh. Ceiling is gone. I'm all out of shit oh, to fuck. give, loincloth. Welcome oh, God. To fucking reckoning. Oh, no. This isn't good. This isn't good. Shit. Put your damn gun down. People are gonna get hurt. We need to talk this through. Uh, All right? I'm so scared. <laughs> no, talk yourself out of this, loincloth shit fuck. Oh, God. Whoa, look at that one person at the corner. The outfit. They look like a bug. That's crazy. Sorry. This is the mercenary <laughs> at the gates. His chest rises and falls under the ceramic breastplate. His fingers reach for the butt of his sidearm. I'm scared. There's something very wrong with him. He's dangerous. Shh. The lieutenant raises his left hand. This is a misunderstanding. Nothing irreversible has happened yet. You can just return to your unit and forget all about this. The kicked is merciful. Oh. Willing to spare us if we just forget about our murdered and humiliated commander. Her tone is- I think we should just kill everyone, Corti. Sorry. Her tone is frightening, frighteningly emotionless. You are all drunk. Come to your senses. You won't gun down seven people in the middle of the street. This isn't a frontier town or a jungle outpost. I'm not- <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for this. Easy, Lizzie. Let me handle it. I know guys like this. I'm sure we can come to a peaceful agreement. Ain't that right, fellas? His voice is almost gentle. He is facing overwhelmingly superior firepower, and he knows it. Peaceful. Sounds like the armored figure is weeping. Nest in your abdominal cavity like a little wild mouse. The masked man's words are barely intelligible, but you can hear them. I can't even begin to pronounce these names. Fuck, there's the third one. How did we miss something like this? Lieutenant points it to the helmeted figure. I don't know. The lieutenant is genuinely worried for his life. You should consult him before getting in there. Uh, <laughs> we're out of time. This is... What do we do, Spirit? The big one is the mercenary at the gates, the scab leader. Oh, God. What do we do? My plan is not to get killed. But we have to intervene. We're out of time. This is... The Mercenary Tribunal. The lieutenant nods. Uh, I wasn't expecting this to happen so soon. Oh, God. Oh, is this, like, endgame? I don't know. I don't know. This is one big... The big one is the Mercenary of the Gates. If this turns into a firefight, we should take him out first. I don't have ammo in my gun, he nods. A sound uh... strategy. He's the leader. Stop, this is the police. Oh, God. Mm -mm. Get lost, comedian. You cops had your chance. Now it's fucking time for some justice. He licks his lips, waving his gun at the crowd. Losing his balance for a moment, he staggers backwards. Is he drunk? I think he's calmed down a bit. Okay. No, he didn't. He's about to open fire. So which one is it? Who's right? He is... I was wrong. Big fuck! Oh, God. <laughs> Please don't. I don't want anyone to die. The voice beneath the, the helmet interrupts your thoughts. You can only make out the last word. I can see you're drunk. One wrong move and I'm taking you out. Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Easy now. No one needs to die here today. Oh, people are gonna die today. We're not leaving it like this. These tribals hung him up. For everyone to see. No one is going to kill anyone. Shit. Let's just put the guns down and talk like civilized human beings. I don't think I'm ready for this. With a wordless gurgle, the killer loads his long rifle. The leader gives a small nod to the helmeted man. You feel your fist contract as you stand there between these men all carrying real weapons. And I don't have no, no, anything. Okay. Soften him up. 
and trust the others to attack if it comes to that. Make him talk. Present an argument. But I don't know what happened yet. Even if it comes to a fight, it's always a good idea to drag it out. Get under his skin. I don't know about this getting under his skin. He'll only get under yours. I'm barely keeping you together here. This is it. Peace. Always peace. Oh, fuck it you. has worked thus far. Start with the first idea you have. Move down from that. Please. Okay, think of an argument. I don't know. I don't know. Who's that? Point to the man. I didn't know you had a third guy. Rude. Rude is the killer. Rude, the killer. How and Cloven. He doesn't talk much. The armored woman smiles a vicious smile. All of you cunts inside out. What was that, Rude? The killer? The gunner. The raddest. The killer. He gestured toward himself. He nods toward the woman. Oh, okay, he's the gunner. She's the raddest. He's the killer. He points to the clad figure. Okay. What do you think he does? There, on the rim of Owen Clerven's helmet, you count little stick figures. 19, 20, 21. All of his kills. Count the figures. About 50 little stick figures. All of them black. Plus two little white ones in the end. Kills black people. Think you're real tough, huh? This killing is meaningless. Kills? That's right. Plenty of chips here in Revachal, too. He stares at you with watery eyes. Gee, gotta love these dudes. The music is so good, though. Gee, let's fucking do it. The man presses through his teeth, his hands on his belt. Gee. Easy. Easy now. Listen, they didn't do it. Yeah? Who did? Just need to fight. Oh god, I don't know. Need to figure this out. I think it was Titus, it was Clause, it was Ruby, it was me. Someone else, someone who's not here right now. What did it what if it is him? Harry, I mean. Oh I need a little time to figure this out. Time! You had time to fuck around in that church. To run errands for your union chief. I saw you. She points over the water. Time is up, loin cloth. Give me a name. Now! It was someone else. Someone who's not here right now. How fucking convenient. He gives you a drunken stare. He, then he puts his hand on the gun. He was shot from a great distance. A sniper did it. A lot of people could have gotten to that roof, like Gart, the cafeteria manager. Actually, they are here. Point to the enemy. It was one of you. Ah, I should have looked into things more. Oh, I blew it. It still changed my mind, right? We shot from a great distance. You think I'm fucking stupid, cop? What if I just shot one of your pals here, right now, huh? It's a dangerous gleam in his eye. Uh, please don't. How about the kid? Tell me. The magic fucking sniper. One more time. Points his gun at his Elizabeth. Uh Listen, please. This cop and this drumhead cop marshal won't decide who He's gonna do it. He's gonna shoot her. Think think, why doesn't he believe me? Your mind grows to a halt. All you can see is the revolver in the man's armored hand, swaying, pointed at her. Oh you god. Move your mouth like a fish gasping for air. She's a woman, don't Oh my god! Fuck me! Oh my god! I am ruining everything. He pulls the trigger, a plume of smoke erupts from the muzzle. The shot rings in your ears. A low, tinny ring. Then, the Hardy Boys yell something. I'm okay. <sighs> I'm okay. The woman grabs her left side. She's down. Her white shirt soaks blood red around her abdomen. She gasps for air. I can never tell with these aboriginals. Is no one gonna help her? Fuck this! The man starts pulling something from his pocket. Gee, Shit! Cancel Lizzie! Now! Thank you. Oh my god. 
Oh. Uh. Shoot. Oh my god. Where is Clasier? She can explain this. Who the fuck is that? Clasier, the woman upstairs. Where is she? She left. The manager calls down from the balcony. What? Unarmed, hunched, but keeping it together. Gart, what the hell are you doing here? What am I doing? My fucking establishment is under fire! <sighs> you know how much windows cost? <laughs> what do you mean she left? She left! Her room's cleaned out! Right before these assholes showed up! How convenient. We should have arrested her. Lieutenant whispers, his eyes still on the armed mercenaries. Shit. You can feel how upset he is with himself. Just for a second. Then the fear takes over and he's back in the moment. Oh, I completely ruined this investigation. Hey, Bushman! <gasps> Your little cunt isn't gonna help you out of this one! The veins on the man's neck expands as he yells. Uh, you're all drunk. Look at yourselves. Yes. So what? <laughs> I'm drunk too. Let's dance, baby. Your judgment is impaired. You'll regret this. Nah. I'm clear as day. Fucking government ordained super soldier. He wipes the sweat from his brow. Enough already! What is this? We didn't come here to fucking chat! The woman's voice is furious. Interrupt me again and I will execute you. On the spot, Lance Corporal. The outburst is accompanied by yellowish saliva around his mouth. Ew. Talk about the hangman. Suggestion. 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 Oh. Of course. Oh. Nothing bad will happen. Talk about his dead friend. Really? He seems stable enough to take Really? It. This game hates me. I swear to God, it hates me. I'm sure he's already shot one person. Even better, it will further destabilize him, costing time and maybe even lives. I can't believe this. I feel like I got to know your dead friend during our investigation. Don't fucking talk to me about my brother, loincloth. He squeezes the words out from between clamped lips, his hands on the pistol. Okay, yes. Immediate failure. Things are worse now. He's observing your every motion carefully. The Wild Pines rep does not approve of this. You think I care what that company cunt thinks? <laughs> he laughs. It's a howl laughter. Wild Pines is not going to forgive you massacring a bunch of innocent people. We're working together. She knew you were out of control. She told me. Not going to forgive you massacring a bunch of innocent people. Let me just say one thing. Fucking waste this fuck! I think of an argument. All right, here we go. This is an uh, illegal tribunal. Krenel would never sanction this. Who's the commanding officer? Take your pick. You only have time for one argument. Choose wisely. Just a question. Who's in charge of your unit after the death of your colonel? Krenel does not give you the right to conduct a tribunal. You were called Downwell once. What happened? Don't bring up the death. I shouldn't bring up the death of him. Called Donwell, what happened? What always happens when you get good at your job? That name meant night raids. Fucking extrajudicial funky time burned villages. Shit that sounds bad on the radio. The same thing happened when we were called whatever the fuck it was. Probably won't be called Cronell for much longer either. He looks around. The woman has grown silent. She draws shallow breaths. Oh my god, is she Not okay? after this shit. Okay, it's not much. But he's thinking about something else. And his hand is off the gun. This did something. Now fire. Did it? Fuck them up. What? Do it. The muscles on your back tense up. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm going to die. Nice knowing you guys. <laughs> A plume of smoke and fire erupts from the gun, and your hand goes numb from the explosion. <laughs> Looks like the smoke rising from the barrel. The Should I have done that? west with the wind. You hear the plaza erupt in violence, slow, like a waterfall in reverse. Look at him. Oh, fuck. Should I have done that? 
He was about to kill other people. It was self-defense. It's fine. There's a hole in his cheek. Blood gushes out as he stumbles backwards, eyes filling, filled with rage and disbelief, gurgling, muttering something unintelligible. His friends are going to shoot his us. His lips, moving, swollen with fear, are trying to say, shoot him, shoot him, but he can't. Shit. <gasps> oh god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. The killer raises his rifle and takes aim at you. <gasps> His moves are steady, shit, but shit, the shit, long barrel shit. of the rifle sways slowly. Oh my god. Kim, where's Kim? From the corner of your eye, you see the lieutenant raise his pistol and aim it at Reed. <sighs> I'm shaking. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Blink, think. Dodge the shot. Fuck. Okay, I know this is not where we were just at. My game crashed. Yes, during this section, it crashed. And I've done everything exactly the same. I've had to reload so many times. I know it's the worst moment, but um, I'm just, I had to reload it here. I'm sorry, it's not gonna be exactly the same, but this is as close as I could get it. I didn't get much past this, so. It's his pistol. All right. And aim it. You leap Whoa. Left. A swarm of angry lead passes mere millimeters from your Ooh. side, tearing fabric off your coat. It feels <laughs> like the lightest of tongues. Okay, I didn't, I didn't dodge that the first time and I got shot in the arm. Joy, I am alive. I cannot be killed, I have become immortal. Stop shooting at me. I'm alive. The man tilts his head, trying to see through the clearing smoke for the next shot. Watch out, to your left. Paul is about to take a oh, shot shit. too at Kim. God, please. Lieutenant says quietly without trembling, he aims face pale. Two shots ring at once. <laughs> One Ooh. from the lieutenant's pistol Jeez. and the other from DePaul's. It's aimed at the lieutenant, but it misses. You hear a scream behind you. <gasps> Kim, did he hit the rifleman? Blood gushes from shit. the helmet's eye sockets <sighs> as Rude staggers back, disoriented. The sounds coming from his helmet are not human. An unbelievable shot from the lieutenant. <laughs> Who screamed? Glenn, dying in a puddle of blood behind you. Shit. His mangled torso has two gunshot wounds. Blood gushes out of them like red geezers. Oh, I feel bad. Oh God, watch out! Oh my God. You see two crazed eyes stare at you through all the smoke and the panic. With blood gushing from his face, the man raises his pistol at you, then he squeezes the trigger. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. Just please don't hit Kim. <laughs> I'm dead. Look him in the eye. The look of vengeance, framed in blood, lips shaking. This is the last thing he'll do on Earth, but he will do it. He is your end. Here it comes. Death. I'm just afraid if I try to evade, he'll hit Kim. Let it happen. Try to evade? Yeah. Shit. You can't. There is no time. Something inside your pelvis explodes. Your entire lower body is on fire and your legs can't support you. You fall down like a rag doll. The pain is too immense to scream. It pushes the air out of your lungs. Everything goes dark. <sighs> Distant blur as you recede into it. I'm dead. <laughs> Listen through the darkness and the pain. Try to touch your lower body. Oh, I see. Listen through the darkness and the pain. The Hardy Boys are screaming, fighting, dying. Someone jumps over you. Nearby gunfire shatters glass. Stop! The cop! Protect the cop! He's down! Thanks, Titus. Tr touch your lower body. Feels slick and warm with blood. The pain is too strong to know what has happened there. Even clutching to your consciousness takes everything you've got. What parts of me are missing? Most of what's down there. <laughs> okay, this is not the time for jokes. Oh god. It's all gone. Open your eyes now. You have to see what's happening. No, no. 
It's just a fear. Even if... Who cares? No one wants you anyway. Try to open your eyes. What do I see? Nothing. A persisting darkness. Shit. Dancing lights of pain. Distant shadows cast by them. Like a hellish play. You're bleeding out. Out of it, a silhouette appears crouching over you. You hear a familiar voice filled with urgency and fear. No one wants to do anything with me. No one wants to party with me. It's so dark, I can't see anything. Kim, I lied about not remembering who I am. I made it up. I remember everything. I don't think you, you do. There's a white shadow that smells like apricots. It's always there. I can't see anything. Stay with me. You hear me? Stay awake. Look at me. Lieutenant pushes down on your wound hard. But you can't. It's so hard. Your eyelids grow heavy, and the sounds ever more distant, and the cold comes over you. The lieutenant, too, is somewhere far away, almost gone, when suddenly you sense something behind him, a slender white shadow towering. Someone stands there, no. raising her pistol at him. The lieutenant does not see it. He's pushing down on your wound with both hands. Please. No, Kim. No, you scream. Behind you, from your bloody lips, your eyes are full of fear. There is no room for hesitation. The lieutenant turns around and fires, his body falling on yours in the course of the motion. You hear a faint scream, a woman's. Then the sound disappears. Like someone pressed stop on the tape. The woman is gone. So is Kim. Then the whole world. Fall into total darkness. This is death. One more Don't door, cry. baby. <laughs> One more door. Oh my god. Will I be a ghost now? Good, I want to die. Let me back into the fight. The fight? There is no fight. The fight is over. It was lost a thousand years ago. You have laid here forever. Keep falling deeper. Take the door. He's not taking it. His body is not taking it. Oh, God, no. He's not disintegrating. He's swelling up instead. Over the hours. Hurting. Moaning in his sleep. And rotting. And being disinfected. And smelling of drugs and feeling saliva in his mouth. Drifting in painkillers. Thrashing. In his bone sleep. He can't go. Not before the case is solved. There is a radio in the distance. A radio of the world. Plain sounds. Good morning, Elysium. Soon you will return to the world. This hurts. <laughs> Hours turn to days. Soon we will get up again and go through it. Again, again. Finally, we know what the infernal engine was outside. The clarion call. It was him. He is the infernal engine. He never stops. He only gets worse. <sighs> oh my god, this is too much to handle. I feel like I completely screwed up this game. <laughs> You see the lieutenant's familiar shape in the orange jacket. It turns double, then triple, from the pain. Did he clean up my room? It's nothing. You're alive. That's what matters. Get him. Sunrise, Arabellon. <sighs> Lieutenant says he's in the middle of a freshly cleaned room with the fan above his head like a halo. His face is covered in bruises. Or is this his room? No, it's mine. Ouch. The room is clean. What did you say? Sunrise? 
How about it? Am I hurt? What happened? Okay. Ouch. It's not ouch time yet. You just got the Dromin pill an hour ago. Wait until it wears off. <laughs> the room, it's clean. Mr. Gart cleaned it. It took him an entire day. How long have I been out? Two days. In and out. You've been up enough to take Dromin and curse. And drink water. Oh, it's day eight. What did you say? Sunrise? Sunrise Parabellum. Sunrise, prepare for war. It's an old revolutionary saying. My gun, it's engraved on it. It served you well. Is it war today? The gates of the harbor are boarded up. The streets are a little more empty. Apocalyptic violence is yet to erupt, I am relieved to say. He looks out the window. I think we may have held it off for now. Barely. He unzips his bomber jacket. Good. A pity. Ouch. <laughs> That's right. Ouch, indeed. He nods in agreement. What happened? What happened? You shot the Major in the face. A firefight ensued. Is he dead? Yes. A bloodstained killer. I'm a killer. You're an officer of the RCM. He continues without waiting for a reply. As retaliation, the rifleman tried shooting you. He missed, or you dodged. Then what? I shot and wounded him, while Glenn took a bullet in the spine. It was meant for me. He did not survive. Shit. There's a pause. This is not the first person to die in his place. He goes on. That... that hurts. <laughs> Titus, Fat Angus, and Theo charged. Angus and Theo did not make it. They both died before they made it to intensive care. Titus survives. So do Alain and the musician. I forget his name. Holy shit, so many of them died. Eugene? Yes. He's still alive too. You were bleeding out. You said something. I don't know what. And you warned me. I was able to disarm Officer de Paul before she got the jump on me. Thank you. I killed her. And that's what happened. Lieutenant takes out a cigarette from his coat pocket and lights it. A bitter smell fizz fills the room. So you killed... So you also killed. I thought you only smoked one a day. I think he needs it right now. <laughs> They're all dead. All three of the contractors. So you also killed. He nods. I thought you only smoked one a day. This is the one. And they're all dead, all three of the contractors? The pool was the last to die. Everhart had their bodies returned to Connell for a funeral. The company is yet to retaliate. Why? Because we deterred them? Or Joyce did? Maybe the harbor in full lockdown is too costly a target. Or maybe... He breathes in the fumes, thinking. Maybe they are simply taking their time and will attack soon. I don't know. I need to take a deep breath. How many casualties on the Union side total? Five. Glenn, Theo, Shanky, and Angus. The fat one. He took a lot of bullets. There's a pause. And Elizabeth, too. Elizabeth Beaufort was her name. The gardener. She didn't make it? No, she bled out before Everhart's surgeon could help her. Everhart sent his personal doctor, but... A costly loss for the Union. She was being trained for leadership. He shakes his head. If I would have presented the theory better to the leader. She never had a chance. She should not have been there in the first place. There was no way to convince them. Stop this line of thought now. You're too broken for ghosts. And that's... All. An absolute disaster. It's a total shit show, Kim. Not that bad, all things considered. I don't see how it could have gone any better. It's a total shit show. Yes, officer. Six people are dead. It's not a success. Wait, it says seven. Is it seven or six? But what's done is done. The violence is cordoned off. The Hornets did not get into the beehive. The worst scenario has not materialized yet. He rubs his swollen chin. And we are still alive. Both of us. He smiles. He did not expect you both to survive once you stepped between those two armies. <laughs> Me neither. His smoking, his hunched back. You have it worse, but he took a real beating. That cigarette has medicinal purposes. 
How bad am I hurt? Reasonably bad. You were shot in the left quadriceps. That's your tie. The outer side, thankfully, no major arteries were nicked. The bullet was removed and a bacterial infection treated with mercurochrome. Can I walk? We will see. Has anyone from my station been to see me? No. A man and a woman sit in the front seat of an armored motor carriage. The woman is driving. The man lights a cigarette. Jean Vitmer is his name. The asphalt vanishes under the wheels of the machine. Ahead, harbor cranes rise to the sky. Back to that shithole, he says. You don't care about me at all. Good, I don't need them. Really? Isn't that strange? Really? I called your station after the fight. The injury was logged in. They told me they've sent officers to join you on the site. Odd. You haven't seen any, have you? I'm sure they are worried about you. If not my station, then who treated me? I did. Thank you. No need. Are you hurt? Not very. I have a concussion from that woman beating me with the butt of her gun. I try to not move too much. Ouch. Things would be worse if you didn't warn me. Thank you. I did not see her coming, stupid of me. Okay. <sighs> Easy now. Lieutenant turns double again before your eyes, an orange hue of pain. You can take it. Just don't lean on that leg of yours too heavily. How are you? <laughs> My disco days are done. I feel fantastic. Let's rock. Who cares? Who cares about me? It doesn't matter. I'm very bad, Kim. Things are very bad. <laughs> the lieutenant looks at you, teetering on your feet. He thinks you should sit back down. Back straight now. You're not sitting anywhere. What happens now? I honestly don't know. You don't know? But I don't know either. Good, because I totally do. I don't know either. You don't know? We can't talk to Everard. The harbor is in lockdown. Everyone in there is outside our grasp now. And Joyce has left too. Joyce is gone? Yes, she left yesterday morning. To meet the board of wild pines. Oh, that is what I've heard. There's a pin somewhere in the machine that keeps Connell from sending in a death squad. He looks out the window. Maybe it's her. Maybe she kept her hand. Either way, Ruby's gone. And Classio too. We really should have arrested her, you know? Yeah, we should have. <laughs> Wait, you've checked? She's really... God confirmed she left 20 minutes prior to the tribunal showing up. That backstabbing bitch. Who did it then, Kim? Who killed the hangman? I don't know. I think that someone else outside our circle of suspects was right. It better be. Everyone within the circle is either dead or gone. Honestly, I think our investigation has not produced a single credible suspect. His voice is calm, matter-of-factly. This is because I'm La Pute Madre Pioni, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be narcissistic. Half the cops in Revachol West are his peonies. Even if you are, it is not a decisive factor in this case. That does make some sense. That fucking Maybells, Kim, the flowers. There's still a 28% possibility the shot came from a distance. An antique bullet from a Bell McGrav, 4.46 millimeters. How hard can it be to find one? How hard can it be? There are all these old bunkers and weapon cache caches. Revolutionary era. How hard can it be to find one? It's extremely easy. There are thousands lying around. We found one. All completely unusable. It's precisely how easy it is to find one that makes the bullet useless. There are all these old bunkers. We could find thousands more if we wanted. All of Revachol is full of them. But they seemed so mysterious. Can't believe they're fucking useless. No need to be melodramatic. The flowers. What? Yank it out and show the dried flower while falling. It falls to pieces. This one, remember? Every piece of garbage in the city is not connected to the case. You don't have to keep everything. He's wrong. No, Kim. Every piece of garbage in the city is connected to the case. Okay. 
You can see it's clearly not meeting it. Okay, I feel like I'm losing my mind. You know what I think about solving crimes? He arches his brow. The ceiling fan patiently spins overhead. Solving crimes is hard. <laughs> solving crimes is almost impossible. It's almost impossible. It can feel that way sometimes, yes. He sounds surprisingly weary. That concussion must be making him dizzy. That's right. Let's give up. Time to start drinking. You're not ready to give up, are you? No. Are you ready to limp? There's a short pause. I'm ready. Good. Where do you want to limp to? Let's just aimlessly wander until a clue presents itself. <laughs> Let's do that. We can start upstairs in Classio's bedroom. I have not done a thorough sweep after she left. He extinguishes his cigarette on the sole of his boot. Another look at the window, perhaps? The one he was shot through. I don't know. I can't think of anything better. <sighs> okay. Can I look at this again now that it's fixed? You know, place gra glass shining in the morning light. Your traffic outside back in the world again. It's so weird seeing it normal. The Stereo 8 player has been reunited with its with its right speaker. RCM Lieutenant's pants. Huh? Um these cotton blend pants are very comfortable, yet manage to look official and businesslike. Inside, someone's delicate hand has embroidered a signature onto the garment's care label. It says, Perseus Black. Okay. You see a gleaming white enamel, no bottles inside. Look, the door's open. You can walk right into Kim's room. Oh, interesting. I don't know why I would do that. Um... Oh, hello. Oh, it's so much tinier. Aw. Medicinal supplies on the cupboard. Metchchrome, a scalpel, antibiotics. I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry. Alar alarm is set for 6.50 a.m. What you got here? These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half-finished. You may have notes on this, and other recent cases. I had got opened the door to your room. You were running a low bacterial fever the first night. <laughs> he cares about him so much. Thank you for keeping this the thing alive a little longer. Point to yourself. I'm such a burden, I should just fuck off. I saw apocalyptic visions of the darkness behind darkness behind darkness. Thought I was dead for a moment. Thank you for keeping this thing alive a little longer. It would have been easy were it not for my concussion. We both got lucky, considering the odds we faced. Let's go. There's a pause. You can't I am look sure at his paperwork? neither of us oh. solid enough to keep loitering in this room. Let's go. Okay. Okay, I need to leave this episode off here. It's been a long episode. We've done a lot. I feel like I have successfully screwed up everything. I got so many people killed. I got so many people killed. The only person I really didn't get killed was Ruby and Kim. Thank God. Thank God he's okay. I, I probably would have reloaded the game had Kim been killed. So... Um, thank God, but it just, ugh, I don't know what to say. Things came to a head at that moment, and pretty much everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. I feel like I just wasn't prepared. I didn't know that speaking to Ruby was going to escalate so many things like that. I almost ended the episode after I finished with Ruby, and I didn't, because I'm like, you know what, why don't I just call my station and ask? But no. <laughs> stuff went horribly wrong and so many people died I was not expecting that at all um holy shit <laughs> I am literally at a loss for words I seriously feel like I've messed up a lot of stuff that I cannot take back specifically I believed Clase's bullshit even though Volition was literally telling me hey you're being manipulated by her and I was still like no it's fine 
fine. I feel bad for her. That's what I get for being sympathetic towards her, I guess. At the same time, after all everything that went down, it is really heartwarming that Kim, you know, obviously cares a lot about Harry. And he nursed him back to health. And it's just, I'm so happy he's okay. <laughs> Very happy he's okay. I feel like... It sucks that we let Ruby go, but I'm happy that she's alive because there is a possibility that maybe we can find her again and settle everything. Who killed the hangman? Who did it? I literally have been betting on his own dudes probably killed him. But now it just shows that all of them were horrible people. <laughs> all of them. And it's... The, really, the only person I feel like I can trust in this game is Kim. That's it. I feel like I can't trust anyone else. Um, and I just don't know where to go from here. I'm just so lost. I really thought I did pretty much everything I could have done. I really didn't have that many other... That many tasks that I could have done. Um, the only thing I was thinking was figuring out where the bullet was shot from. But... I couldn't do anything. Like, I tried searching on the boardwalk and nothing was popping up. I mean, I can put footage of me walking back and forth on the boardwalk over and over again everywhere trying to find, you know, something to pop up and tell me, okay, was he shot from here and narrow it down? I couldn't do that. So there was really nothing else I could have done. The only thing that I was, that was getting me into trouble was failing the checks. Like, I keep failing it. But thank God I passed the important ones in this episode. As much as the game feels unfair sometimes for when I fail those checks, I did pass the ones that mattered. And um, we saved Kim. Uh, we didn't die. But we got Elizabeth killed. We got, um, you know, like a bunch of dudes from Titus's group killed. And I didn't want them to die, you know? I feel like... Uh, I feel like they didn't deserve to die at all. Oh, I feel so conflicted. I don't know. I feel like I've done, just done so much wrong. But I cannot believe my game crashed at that point. I had to reload and I did everything the same. Um, except for uh, when Lizzie got shot, I just stood there and let it happen because I didn't want to like risk the check again because I felt like I would pass it. Um, so she just got shot and I felt horrible. Um, but everything else was the exact same, basically. I think the only thing that I did differently was I didn't use a skill point for a specific skill. But other than that, it's all the same. Holy shit. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did or subscribe if you're new because I'd love to have you stick around and watch me play some video games and lose my mind. I almost cried. Because I thought Kim was going to die. I thought I was going to die too. So, holy shit. I got so many people dead. I feel so bad. Anyways, guys. I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.